we said that there are six categories of nutrients carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, vitamins, the essential minerals, and water. We will study these six categories of nutrients in a lot more detail during this course. But for now, let's just briefly introduce a few facts about them. Carbohydrates are nutrients whose primary function is energetic. They are made of different combinations of three small molecules called glucose, fructose, and galactose. If these molecules are present in food by themselves, or combined in groups of two, we call them simple sugars. For example, glucose is a simple sugar. And sucrose, which is made by one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose, is also a simple sugar, our table sugar. On the other hand, if many of them are combined together to form long chains, we call them complex carbohydrates, such as starch or glycogen, which are long chains of many molecules of glucose linked together with chemical bonds. Some complex carbohydrates, such as cellulose, cannot be digested and therefore do not provide any energy. We classify these non-digestible carbohydrates as dietary fiber, and as we will learn, they still perform very important protective functions in our body. From now on, however, when we use the word carbohydrates or carbs, we will only be referring to the digestible carbohydrates that provide energy. And so, unless otherwise specified, when we say carbohydrates, we will not be referring to dietary fiber. Lipids are another important class of energetic nutrients, and they provide more than twice as much energy as carbs. Some lipids, however, have very important structural functions, such as phospholipids and cholesterol in our cell membranes. Other lipids, such as the essential fatty acids, have key regulatory functions. Most of the lipids in our diet, however, are molecules called triglycerides, and their primary function is to provide energy. Proteins are also capable of providing energy if needed, however, this is not their preferable use. Rather, proteins are very important structural nutrients that build all the organs and tissues of our body, and they are involved in the vast majority of regulatory functions to make these structures work in the form of enzymes, hormones, antibodies, and many others. Proteins are molecules made of a sequence of little units called amino acids. There are many thousands of proteins that our body is able to build, but they are all made with the same 20 basic building blocks, the amino acids, by linking them together in different combinations and in different numbers. Carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins are referred to as the macronutrients because we need them in relatively large amounts. Conversely, vitamins and minerals are referred to as the micronutrients because we need only small amounts of them. Vitamins and minerals do not provide any energy, but they have very important structural or regulatory roles. Calcium and phosphorus, for example, are minerals with a very important structural function in our bones while vitamin K is an important regulatory molecule for blood clotting. Just like carbs, fats, and proteins, vitamins are organic molecules, which means that they are made by plants, animals, or bacteria, and they contain atoms of carbon in their structure. We have identified 13 different vitamins that our body needs in order to survive. Conversely, Minerals are inorganic elements, which means that they are already present in the environment and are not fabricated by living beings. However, they may be needed by living beings in order to sustain life. We humans need at least 14 of these minerals. We call them the essential minerals, and we can get them from food as well. Another inorganic nutrient that does not provide energy but has key structural and regulatory functions in our body is water. As we will learn, water does not only come from what we drink, but it is also a major component of most of the foods we eat. On top of the nutrients, we know that there are many potentially beneficial food bioactives, and in particular plant phytochemicals that are naturally present in plants, such as polyphenols, carotenoids, or sulfur-containing compounds. These compounds have long been known for contributing to taste, color, aroma, and texture. The color of tomatoes, the smell of broccoli, the aroma of herbs, the burning sensation of hot peppers, the typical flavor of onions, they are all due to the presence of phytochemicals. But today we know that these compounds can do much more than that. 
they exert biological activities in our body, promoting health, reducing oxidative stress and inflammation, and potentially preventing many chronic diseases. Food containing health-promoting bioactives are often referred to as functional foods. However, no legal definitions exist of this term, and we nutritionists don't really like it. Each and every food is functional to an extent, but at the same time, no single food is magic on its own. It's certainly not wise to gamble on one particular food or one particular phytochemical compound in it. Although too often the media, when reporting on results of scientific research, make it look as if it was precisely this way. How many times have you seen headlines like, researchers found that broccoli prevents breast cancer, that blueberries are good for your memory, that dark chocolate prevents a heart attack? The truth of the matter is that simply eating certain foods does not accomplish anything wondrous, let alone taking a supplement. What really makes a difference at the end of the day is how we balance our whole diet.